together. Being number two of our 1992-1993 council of year. Do we have the roll call, please? Yes, Chairman McLaughlin. Here. Council of Traffic. Here. Council of Council. Here. Council of Cranlin. Here. Council of Galvin. Here. Council of Joy. Here. And Council of PS. Uh, PS. We have a pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We start tonight with item number 21 of this year. It is to consider the confirmation of a new fire chief and take any necessary action. Mr. McGovern, would you give us an introduction? Please? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. I was very pleased to go through a uh, very intensive process to uh, select a new fire chief and uh, am able to present to you this evening for confirmation uh, the appointment of Philip D. McGoldrick of South Portland. Uh, Phil McGoldrick is probably one of the better known fire chiefs in the state of Maine. Uh, he has served as the fire chief of the city of South Portland since 1972. Uh, in that capacity, he, he has not only overseen the 56 full-time firefighters in the city, but also 125 call or volunteer firefighters as well. Uh, in uh, checking out references uh, for Chief McGoldrick, uh, I, I checked very carefully uh, how well he worked with volunteers, is that is something you know, we do have here in Cape Elizabeth and want to make sure that it would work out well. And uh, had nothing but very positive comments uh, in that respect. Uh, he also has worked uh, very hard uh, to, Im to improve the fire insurance rating uh, for the city of South Pole. So at this point, it's probably one of the best fire insurance ratings of any city of similar size anywhere in the country. Uh, it being a class two rating, which is, which is truly exceptional. Uh, he has also uh, been very much involved in training and in uh, fire prevention. Uh, he's been an instructor with the Maine Fire Service uh, Academy. That's the, I don't think that's the proper term. <coughs> but anyway, uh, since uh, 1969, uh, he was one of the ones that developed the Learn Not to Burn program not only in Maine, where he has served as its coordinator, but also as an instrumental in uh, setting it up across the country as well. Uh, I think the training piece is very important because as we went through the needs assessment process for the fire department training was cited as the number one uh, need uh, of the department. Uh, as far as education, Chief McGoldrick uh, is a graduate of the University of Maine, uh, where he received a degree in vocational education. He also holds an associate's degree in fire science from uh, Southern Maine Technical College, for, formerly SMBTI. Uh, he's also uh, received numerous other courses and uh, has various, various other certifications. Uh, something of, of quite a bit of importance to me is that he's also been willing to do things regionally as well as in, in his own community. Uh, the joint service bidding that COG now does uh, way before COG uh, even began to go into joint bidding, uh, Chief McGoldrick had set up a, a joint system for the purchasing of fire equipment uh, in the county, uh, something that he led the effort on and all the other towns uh, worked with as well. Uh, he's also uh, been active in the Little League and basketball boosters and some of those, those other things as well. Uh, he has served as president of the Maine, Maine State Fire Chiefs Association, and uh, as the council is aware, he is currently serving as the Vice President of the International Association of Fire Chiefs. Uh, it is expected uh, that a year from this October, uh, he will be elected to the position of President of the International Association of Fire Chiefs. And I know that you know, there, there is some concern as to the, the amount of time that that position uh, will require. And I had, did have quite a bit of discussion uh, on that with Chief, with Chief McGoldrick as well as with Jerry Bryant, uh, who uh, is the city manager of South Portland and the current uh, employer of Chief McGoldrick. Uh, it, it is my sense that uh, it, it is very important, I think an honor for Chief McGoldrick to have this position, but I also think it, it can bring an awful lot to Cape Elizabeth in terms of the resources uh, that, that he can bring, the knowledge that he gains, 
as well as the experience uh, with leadership. Uh, all of his expenses in relating to that position uh, will be assumed by the International Association and uh, not by the town of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, as for the specific number of days that he might be out of town, uh, you know, we have had some discussions on that. We do have an understanding of it, but I'm a little bit hesitant to try to tie the hands at this point. I think it's important that uh, he do the very best job that he can with that position, and he'll also sit, uh, do the very best job uh, as the fire chief of Cape Elizabeth. I certainly think Chief McGoldrick is up to it. Uh, he has a reputation of being overly energetic. Uh, he has a reputation of uh, going anywhere to a fire, uh, of being hands-on, of uh, you know really service above and beyond the call of duty. Just last evening, the uh, volunteers were looking at a ladder track out, out in back of town hall here, and he was here. Uh, and I think you know that that's the type of an individual that Chief McGoldrick is. Uh, someone that is going to work very, very closely with the volunteers. Someone that, that I think the community should be very proud uh, that we've been able to attract to this community and someone who I think will uh, do an excellent job as far as you. Thank you. Would anybody from the public like to speak to this item? Because we're watching. I'd like to have a motion and then any discussion from the council. I'll move the appointment of Chief McGoldrick. I'll second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. I just wanted to ask Mr. McGovern, um, of all the different criteria we have listed when you were asking us to um, support you in putting a full time fire chief. Did you implement all these into your discussion with Mr. Goldman? Yes. Did you? Yes. You know, and, and my sense was, uh, you know, that he, he fit all of those those requirements to a to a T. Uh, for example, you know, the top priority you mentioned in that particular memo, the top priority of the new chief needs to be training. Uh, I don't think he's a better trainer in the state of Maine. I, I, I hate to sound like I'm overly exaggerating, but I don't think that there is. Uh, he, he's trained over 2,000 teachers to teach the Learn Not to Burn program. Uh, because as I mentioned earlier, he's been an instructor uh, at, through the SMPC program. Uh, the other portions, uh, the development of revised standard operating procedures. Again, I think the, the fire service rating for the city of South Walton speaks for itself in terms of uh, what he's able to do in that particular area. Uh, morale building, uh, I think, you know, People are looking for a leader, uh, and I think uh, Chief McGoldrick will be a, a strong leader. Also, did mention to him my my hopes that he would coordinate and be a compliance officer of the Americans with Disabilities Act, and he's very agreeable and uh, looks forward to learning that new area. Uh, doing that. Councilor Pearson. Yes, thank you. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I just I, I wanted to voice a, a couple of concerns. And so these are some that have been related, and I've talked in depth once again. You know, the, the manager has talked about the, the time commitment, and the president want to lock in and any time blocks or anything. But I think that the concern amongst uh, both residents and volunteers, which is very important, uh, is that the chief, although he does have a good reputation for being hands on and whatnot. Uh, their concerns are, they, I think the biggest thing is, I wish that the, the uh, potential uh, chief were here so that, that we could just ask him, you know, I'm sure you've already quizzed him, but there's a lot of questions as far as uh, what, his, uh, what his agenda is. And I think that that's a scary item for a lot of the volunteers as well as the residents that are concerned with the time commitment. And it's, it's all well and good to say time can be made up at nights and weekends, and that's not questionable. But if it's a working chief as far as filling tanks after fire and stuff and making sure that that's done, that's not something you can do making up after hours or on weekends between the next fire. If it's just a real, you know, I'm sure that, that with his past uh, events and his resume and whatnot, 
I will make sure that the uh, people are capable and in charge to make sure that's done. That is a very, very uh, good concern, and, and I just want to bring that forward and hope that those who are part of the do that. Uh, I think that everyone also supports the background of Chief Hoover, and uh, you know, no problems, and first of all, he's got a way to do That's the biggest concern. Thank you. If I might, uh, we did have a discussion on what his agenda would be as well. And uh, he made very clear, one of the, I think it, we, we could add two questions in the interview uh, with all of the candidates as to trying to determine what the agenda would be. And one of those would be you know, how would you spend your first week on the job? And uh, I think he made clear, as well as the other candidates as well, that uh, you know, no one was going to come in here and tell the community how it was going to run its fire department, that it was really a collaborative process and uh, that uh, there was going to be a lot of reaching out to you know, see uh, particularly what the expectations of the town manager uh, was and then the, the volunteers as well. Uh, the, the other question that you might wonder what was it, I mean, leave your hanging, was we asked if uh, the preference would be appointing or electing the captains of different companies. And uh, again, the chief made very clear that uh, that would be a decision that would be uh, worked out uh, uh, with the companies you know, over time, should it become an issue. It was just one of those questions to see, uh, to get the feel and the sense of the person, how they would go about decision making. I was going to say, just since you brought up the appointment or election of captains, is that the same uh, election or, or uh, appointment of deputy chiefs involved in that? Or is that strictly the chiefs? the sign is immediate hierarchy. Yeah, I think that the, uh, the codes read that the chief appoints the deputy subject uh, to the approval of the town manager, I think even the council. Well, um, just the subject to approval of the manager. I think when it came to the council once was the <coughs> setting up the third position. That's correct. Councilor Dalbeck. Just a couple of questions. First, is, is the South Portland uh, Department a uh, partially volunteer department? Yes, it is. Secondly, you, I, I know you don't want to try to pin down that it will only be X amount of time per week for uh, this uh, in, uh, national job. Uh, on the one hand, on the other hand, have you got a firmer grasp on that? Yes, I do. Can we hear it? Yes, I'd be happy to. Uh, every indication that I've gotten is that on average, uh, we can expect about one day per week during that one year. Uh, also, it, it was also in, we discussed it in the in the context too of how long Chief Gruber uh, planned to be here and take Elizabeth. His plan is to work here for ten years. Uh, so, you know, I think particularly in that context, uh, uh, you know, it, it's a good investment. And if it's you know, I hate to refer to it as a sacrifice we need to make during that one year because I, I don't see it so much as a sacrifice as. Uh, as an opportunity to, to bring new ideas and uh, issues with the community. Well, I'd just like to say that it, it appears to me that this uh, man's credentials are quite uh, quite impeccable, and I think that, I forget what the newspaper said, it was a coup or something to take Elizabeth to have uh, lured this fellow from South Portland, uh, our, our you know, condolences, I suppose, in South Portland. This doesn't jeopardize any relationship with there being our backup in the future. I, I obviously accept that's going to be a problem. Um, but I also would like to thank in the interim, uh, you know, Jim Murray. I think he's done an outstanding job uh, in the interim here. Um, in so many ways, uh, his uh, devotion and time and commitment to the community has been um, very, very well uh, received. And, and certainly as a council, we're indebted to him for taking this uh, difficult position in the context of the Chief Webster's death. But I think we've got a great uh, great person, and I think the whole story that seems so impressive is, is the leadership quality, but again, I couldn't agree more uh, with our town manager. Councilor Pearson. Just, just one question. I wanted to see if I could get the town manager to continue playing some time once a little uh, bit more. Uh, this one day a week, all right, so if we can assume that's 52 days a year, uh, does the chief give any indication of how long each 
block of time spent the way it is. Obviously, if he's going to go to Istanbul, he's not going to go for one day a week. He's going to go for a week or 10 days or two weeks or three weeks, whatever. Is there any, <coughs> obviously, with such an organization, he's got to know where he's going to go and when. Yeah, it, it, at this point, his, his international travel schedule has not been worked out. Uh, but it, it is anticipated that we'll be one international trip uh, during his year as president. Uh, beyond that, the, the board meets four times a year. Uh, they meet on weekends, so you know, they would probably be attached to that on a, on a Monday or Friday. Uh, but uh, you know, again, I, my expectation is it would average out to be one day a week, including those the longer block of time when he when he may be overseas. Councilor Jordan. I just want to say that uh, I think Phil will do an excellent job for us in Cape Elizabeth. I've worked with him before in the past and uh, he's very interested in Cape Elizabeth and also South Poland and the surrounding communities. He is in a one town there. And uh, he will uh, be ready to work with anybody and everybody. He has his ideas and he's pretty strong, but you hear him out and I think a lot of times you'll find that he made a correct decision. And uh, <clears throat> he'd come to see me at uh, the article was in the paper and I, I said that I support him and uh, that uh, I know you're the type of a guy that if you had to go somewhere today and there was something to be done in the office tonight, you would come back and do it. Then I'm going to look at this as an 8 to follow or 8 to 5 job. He says that's right. It's the way he does it and so forth. Thank you, Councilor. Councilor Chairman. Yeah, I couldn't just uh, sit here and uh, throw out and keep quiet because i got just one thing on my mind and it's not anything against the <coughs> chief that we're considering confirmation of tonight. It's about how we got here, and it bothers me, and I thought I'd better bring it up because I've heard from quite a few others that it bothers them. What kind of a, a situation do we find ourselves in when we say to consider the confirmation? There's no considering at all about it. It's been considered, it's been uh, done before we even got up here tonight to consider it, and that bothers me just a little bit in the process. Now, let me we state that this is nothing against the confirmation of the chief. I think his record is great. I would like to have the council be in a position of not just rubber stamping uh, things that happen and have a chance to have this discussion amongst ourselves prior to it appearing in the paper that Chief McGoodrick is our new chief and will take over at a certain date and then a little blip at the end uh, subject to confirmation of the council. Uh, putting the cart before the horse, my gosh, they're doing it in Washington and getting away with it, and they're doing it up in the state, and I suppose we can get away with it here, but I, I don't like the process. It bothers me that we are not more into it as it's going along and uh, have a chance to have this discussion, as I say, before uh, this comes out, that this is the chief, this is the man we want, this is the man that's uh, already attending uh, leadership meetings and, and so forth, and he is our chief, but I, I don't like to, to be in the spot of sitting up here. It reminds me of the Stephen Virgilio case that we had last year when uh, it should never have gotten to the council, and, and I feel in that same way tonight that this should not be a, an agenda item, that the confirmation is already there. I know it's important that it's got to be done by the council to make it official, but I'd like to have the official part done before it hit the papers. Thank you. Councilor Chapel, I think I received some of the same phone calls that you did concerns that expressed about the process. When I discussed that with the manager, I was directed to the town charter. Well, I don't have this against the manager. No, he knows me, that. This is against the process. Well, and to explain for every so everybody will have an understanding of why the process went the way it did. It is in our town charter that the town manager appoints and removes both subject to the approval of the council the town clerk, the town treasurer, the police chief, the fire chief, the public works director, and other department heads, and prescribes their duties. So that's why the process went through the way it did. And I think part of the thinking of that is 
with the manager having the responsibility for the department heads. The fire chief is accountable to the manager, and the manager is accountable to the town council. If we have enough counselors who are concerned about this, we can certainly do something in a charter revision. That's the way it would have to be changed, is my understanding. I share your concern that our meeting is so late after the newspaper announcement. I would have certainly been more comfortable having a council meeting before there was something in the newspaper. But I think we could have had a special town, a special council meeting the night before, and I would have been as happy as a little teddy bear to read it in the paper the next morning. Yeah. But I'm certainly not happy this way. I can understand that. Appreciate it. Just, if I may, on that, the, the other side of that, and I've heard the issue debated uh, at conferences and whatever, and, you know, it, the reason for the delay was I had told the council that, that I was going to come and would need a special meeting, and the council checked all the schedules and they said June 30th. Uh, the process was done about two weeks ago. Uh, there is no way to keep a secret in this town. Uh, we know a long time ago, I, I can't believe some of the things that are out there, so you know, we wouldn't even, I wouldn't even try to do it. Uh, secondly, uh, you know, by putting the name out, it did allow all of those phone calls to occur with everyone dealing essentially with the same deck of cards, the same information. And, uh, you know, I think if, if you know, you, I announced the appointment to you privately this evening, you voted, confirmed, and, you know, it had been a candidate that you didn't like, you would be highly criticized for not having had an opportunity for people to comment and bring to you any information that was relevant. Uh, my predecessor, uh, the word had leaked out that he was going to appoint a certain police chief back in 1978, and all sorts of information came forward that that person was, was not qualified, was not fit, uh, and ultimately the name was withdrawn. Uh, the candidate withdrew uh, from the process, and uh, another chief was appointed. So, uh, you know, I think the, there's two arguments to it. I, you know, I would prefer that uh, it'd be quicker, but I think there's, there's reasons as well for uh, making sure the public does have a chance to review and provide any information that needs further. It is difficult when the appointments process, the interview process, does not coordinate well with our regular meetings once a month. We try to do the best we can. I just would like to say I have worked with Chief McGoldrick in South Portland, where I'm also employed by the city. And he's one of the department heads who I deal with there doing development reviews. I have found him to have very outstanding leadership qualities. He is a, he's very good at delegating. He trains his people well, and they perform well for him. They respect him. And I think he'll bring very welcomed and good management skills to the department heads and people as I think the department heads are looking forward to having him on that at that level. Do further comments? Council Jordan. I just want to follow up a little bit what Council Chapel had to say, and I'm inclined to agree with him. Maybe we got to take a look at the process and what have because what are you going to do with City of the Night, and what if the Council decided they didn't want to approve it? What are you going to do? And uh, for some reason, I'm, uh, but you, you've got a top notch candidate, so so you go along with it, but I think it should be reviewed or something should be looked at so you don't get into this situation. Any further discussion? Ready for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Seven zero. Welcome aboard, Chief of Thank you. Our next item is the evening, item number 22, to consider an executive session and request for a poverty tax abatement and take any necessary action. I'd like a motion for executive session. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Opposed? 7 0. We will go into an executive session. I believe this is all we need to tell the commission crew for. I really appreciate your being here this evening. Thank you for accommodating us in your schedule. After the, we come out of the executive session, we vote on the tax abatement, and then the council will be going into a workshop. Thank you.